Hey guys, it's Shmeet back here with another chill video. Today we're going to be talking all about Lonzo Ball and these trade rumors that I see on Twitter, on Instagram, um, on ESPN because they, they love this drama of trying to reunite the Ball brothers. It's just insane to me at the end of the day. I don't know how long this video is intended. Obviously, I, I put down some bullet points about things I want to cover and why we, we shouldn't even entertain this idea at the deadline of, of trading for, for Lame or not Lamella, Lonzo. Uh, so if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. We're on a road to 500. You could be a part of that right there. Um, anyways, uh yeah, th this uh, this idea is fucking crazy to me. I, I'm sorry for swearing, but come on. Come on, guys. We're better than this. I mean, I, I know we like uh, a homecoming of brothers in the NBA. Uh, we got the holiday twins, the the Martin twins on our team. Uh, and, and I guess we could bring in Jello and Lonzo and we could have Labar playing like 10 minutes a night. We could have uh, Lonzo's or the ball's mom playing on the sidelines with, with another kid of the, I don't know. I, I hate this idea at the end of the day of bringing in this, this, this Lonzo ball type. I'm not a Lonzo ball hater. I'm not going to act like I'm a Lonzo. I think I actually really like Lonzo ball this year. Um, I didn't like him. I didn't like the hype around him, um, coming into the draft, uh, because I didn't think, he, I think it would be a few years before uh, he actually showed his potential, and and that's become true. He he's drastically improved in shooting. Uh, his defense, he's always been a pretty good defender, always a good passer, playmaker. Playmaking is off the charts. Um, so I'm not I'm not this Lonzo Ball hater, uh, but the idea of bringing him into Charlotte just doesn't make sense at the end of the day. Obviously, these these people on ESPN just look at a trade and be like, okay, they would fit well together because they're brothers. I actually like to dive deeper into it. Um, contractually, it doesn't make sense. Obviously, we have we our team payroll um, it would be under the cap this off season. So if we did bring in if we did bring in Alonzo, it would work in the off season. But a trade right now contractually would not work. Um, but but I had I had some articles uh, entertaining the idea of a trade. Uh, we got the Hornets getting Lonzo Ball in a second round pick. Uh, the Pelicans getting Malik Monk, second rounder, first rounder, and another second rounder. Um, so so we have this theme of either trading too little and having to give up a lot of picks for Lonzo, or trading too much. And and that's that's pretty much the only way it would work is trading away a bunch of picks and and one of our one of our good young guys like Malik Monk. Um, or trading away Terry Rozier, uh, which I've seen uh, Alonzo Ball for Terry Swap, which wouldn't work, so they'd have to throw in another player like a Jackson Hayes, which I ref referenced in another trade video uh, about a month ago now, um, which I don't love the idea. Like, if, they, if we were to trade away Terry, um, obviously this wouldn't be a terrible re return, Alonzo Ball and Jackson Hayes, but... Uh, but I would like to include a few picks because you guys got to understand Terry is at an all-star level right now. He obviously wasn't an all-star, but if you look at his stats throughout the year, he is going crazy this year. Shooting is off the charts. He's probably our, like the number one clutchest player in the league right now. Um, so many clutch moments, uh, underrated defensively. Obviously, I still would have Lonzo over him defensively, but if you look at their whole games, Terry is just at another level, guys. And I... Uh, I guess this is this might be a fair trade with picks, uh, but at the end of the day, I would much rather keep Terry. Um, if we go back to our contract talk, uh, we don't have to pay Terry for another two years. Only eighteen million a year for an all-star level guard in this league is a crazy bargain. Um, when we signed him, it was it was you know it was seen as as a bad contract, but now eighteen million a year is a discount on Terry for what he's doing this year and Lonzo Ball as I said before we would need to we would need to sign in the offseason and I came up with some other players that that would be you know better to sign in free agency obviously we can re-sign guys which I do expect the Hornets to to use some of the the 20 million we have I believe yep we have about 20 to 25 million that we have to sign players, re-sign players. You know, we could re-sign a guy like Malik Monk, who I already referred to. He's, he's, he's an excellent scorer off the bench. So I wouldn't 
hate the idea of signing Malik Monk. We have to know what his asking price is, obviously. Uh, obviously, we have Devontae Graham, who we can extend the qualifying offer to if another team goes after him. Uh, we could bring Bismack Biombo back on a minimum deal. I don't love that idea. Um, or Cody Zeller. But I would rather much have Cody Zeller as maybe a backup getting eight minutes a night uh, on a minimum deal. If we're paying anything more, if we're paying Cody Zeller anything more than the minimum deal, then I'm not okay with it. But if you look at all our centers hitting the free agency market this year, uh, we got Frank the Tank, Frank Kaminsky, drafted him in 2015. He spent four years with us. I don't, I don't know if he'd want to come back to a team that that uh, let him go. Uh, you know, didn't didn't extend the team option to him um, and let him go to Phoenix. But if you look at Frank the Tank this year, uh, since leaving us about two years ago, two or three years ago. This man has improved so much. Um, his three-point shooting, I think he's above 40%, um, which is which is a career high for him, I believe. Um, you know, he's he's into the starting lineup on the third team in the West, which is probably the first team in the East because the West is so much better than the East. But his value on that team is just insane. I mean, he he can he can hold it down defensively. He's not like. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Isaiah Thomas out there who, who you just can't put on anybody. So bringing him in would be pretty nice. Um, you know, we, we could pay, we could, any of these players that I say that I'm about to bring up, we could overpay for. And this is, this is, you know, this is obviously a fantasy world. So I don't know if any of these players would want to come to Charlotte, but you know, we could pay these guys instead of Lonzo. So we got, um, Richard Holmes, who I do believe would want to um, get away from the Kings because I, I don't think they've had a winning season since he's been there. Obviously, they almost made it to the playoffs like two years ago, uh, but I would expect him to be out of there, and I think that the Hornets would be a great fit. Obviously, he he's a, a, like a high-energy guy. He runs the floor uh, good defensively. Uh, his stats are pretty nice. I mean, I think he's averaging like 14 um, and that's way better than than Zeller. Um, then you guys, then you got a guy like Willie Cauley Stein hitting the free agency market this off season. Uh, very good for the for the for the Mavs. Obviously, he's not playing as many minutes uh, because they they got Chris Stops that they that they'd rather give minutes to. Uh, but he's a nice option. Nerlens Noel um, from the Knicks. Um, obviously, kind of a lesser degree. Um, than the, than the players I already said, he's only averaging like five points, but I would still like him above Zeller at the, like all these players I would take above Zeller. Um, and then you got Hassan Whiteside. Um, he gets blocks. He jumps for everything, which I don't know if I like, but he gets blocks, man. And he's another one of those, those guys that can get lazy, but he also puts up stats. So I don't know if the Hornets, you know, value, I don't know what they value. Uh, you got Harry Giles uh, to a lesser degree. Obviously, he's, he's only averaging like 10 minutes a night with, with uh, Portland. Uh, but if you look at his per 36 numbers, they're not terrible. His three-point percentage is like 38%. Uh, so these are these are just some guys. I'm not, a, I'm not listing like every guy that's going to hit the free agency market. But I would believe these are these are more viable options for the Hornets to look at this offseason than than potentially paying Lonzo because we would trade for him and then we would have to pay him because what's the point of trading for him uh, at the deadline if we aren't going to pay him in the offseason. Uh, so so that's it for me, guys. Uh, a lot of my opinion, you may agree, disagree, uh, but I'll see you guys later.